All right, so the reason I'm still using this one is because DPA, there's this adapter for the, the microphone for micro.ta4f, and it's a hundred fucking dollars. It literally takes it, takes the, the, the micro dot connector on the DPA microphone and turns it into the TA4F connector, and it alone is a hundred bucks. So you may be wondering, why don't I just solder my own TA4F connector on? I don't know if that DPA4088 microphone works yet. So if I do that, I void my warranty. But to figure out if it works, I need to get a TA4F connector. So you see how I'm kind of uh, stuck in this catch-22 or if I want to get rid of this piece of shit mic that looks funny, I have to spend 100 bucks on a little... I swear, it's, it's like a little thing that's kind of like one copper connection here and one there. Makes me sick. Uh, if anybody knows where to get a DPA micro dot to TA4F converter for cheaper than 100 bucks, that's not shipping from like the UK or Australia. I'm all ears. Anyway, today we're going to be working on a, one of these boards from the class. So while I was teaching practical board repair school with Jessa, what I would do is I would bring some boards from my pile for people to work on. I did not. I didn't want to bring stuff that didn't work or that was totally dead. Like, I mean, I didn't, some of them weren't fully fixable, but a lot of these are boards that you could actually get something working on them again. And this... When I look at this, it kind of, I mean, this, this went through like three classes of new students. So, I mean, yeah, you ever see, you hear that Project Pat song called Let's Run a Train? I mean, that, that's what I think of when I see this board. So let's just let's take a look and see if we can figure out what was wrong with it. Because it would be really cool if I could actually put this in the window and sell it as something that works. Again, I'm not, I'm probably getting a little greedy there and asking for too much. But man, it would be cool if I could actually get this thing to work. So let's get my microscope camera in focus here. So let me, might as well put this on the other screen so I can see when it's in focus. Okay. All righty. So first things first, PP bus G3 hot on this motherboard is not what it's supposed to be. PP bus G3 hot is supposed to be 12.6 volts. Damn. This really looks a lot better on the new... This new capture card will capture 422 with, without any screw-ups in the color space, but, and I know that you're never going to see that because of YouTube's compression, which makes me kind of sad. But it is what it is. So let's measure and see what voltage I get on PP Bush G3 hot. And this is good. This, I think this will be a good video because we'll get to go over a lot of the common mistakes that people will make, a lot of the student mistakes or mistakes that all of you are going to make when you're first learning how to do this. So I get 1.2 volts. Now, PP Bush G3 hot is created by a buck converter that's controlled by U7000, and that was the chip that we zoomed in and zoomed in on that looked like, again, it, you know, somebody had ran a train on it. So let's see. So over here, it doesn't look that bad, right? But here's what I want you to learn when it comes to QFN packages and checking your work. This means nothing. What means something is what it looks like at an angle. So when we look at this chip from an angle, you'll see that it tells a totally different story. See that? Not soldered. So it looks soldered from the top, but it ain't soldered from the bottom. And this is an important thing to take note of when you're dealing with QFN packages. That it can look, and look, when you look at it over here, it's just, I mean, that's not even remotely close to being soldered. That, that's, that's not right at all. So this needs to be corrected. And you'll get to see what I'm going to do to try to correct this. So again, fuck if I know if that chip is even good anymore. So let's kick on the rework station. This Weller WHA900 doesn't heat up even close to as fast as the JBC does. and I, So the JBC has really spoiled me in that regard. I mean, I, I have to wait before I solder? Are you nuts? I don't want to wait. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do here... Come on. Just is add some flux. We're going to poke that chip over a little bit. I have the bigger nozzle on the weller. I believe this is about six and a half millimeters. Okay, the weller should be hot by now. Waited a decent amount of time. This is the big nozzle. So the nice thing about the big nozzle is... It'll be easier to move the chip over. I can easier to heat the entire chip all at once. Move it to the side a little. And now we solder. I'm going to add a little bit more flux yet again. I'm also going to lower the hot air because I put the temperature really high. I have a tendency to put the temperature higher than I should on, on 
the Hacko and the Weller because I just I don't like that it takes so long to turn up. So I it's to to get hot. So I turn it to a really high temperature, which is a bad habit of mine. Okay. Usually I use the micro pencil for this now, but my trainee actually has that tip on his station and I, I need to buy another one for me. I did buy one for me. And I, and I, I, got, I bought a big tip and a little tip and they didn't, all spec forgot the little tip. I'm sure they'll help me out with that though. They're nice people. Okay. Let's check my work. What do you think? A little bit, little bit too much flux there for me to actually see it properly, right? That looks good. Let's see what voltage I get on PP bus G3 hot. Well, that's some progress. 